it's Easter Sunday! How are you all doing? Have you started eating your Easter eggs yet? Do you know what? I've not been given any yet, but I'm hoping to get them a little bit later. Whatever you're doing today, and however you're celebrating Easter, I hope you're having a lovely time. We're going to be thinking all about Easter today, because today is about the resurrection of Jesus. But before we get into that, let's have another quiz. Let's get our brain cells working. It's time for a quiz with Paul. A quiz with Paul. Hello, it's good to see you again. I've got five more questions, five seconds. Shout out the answers. Let's see how you get on this week. First question. Who wanted to kill Jesus when he was a baby? Who wanted to kill Jesus? It was King Herod. King Herod. Who came to see Jesus at night? That was Nicodemus. Nicodemus. How many days was Lazarus dead before Jesus brought him back to life? Jesus' friend Lazarus, how long was he in the tomb for? Four days. Four. Question four. What did the rich young ruler not want to give up? He didn't want to give up his wealth, his money. And the last question. Whom did Jesus call the comforter? The comforter. Spirit. Jesus said he would send the Holy Spirit and be our comforter. Hope you enjoy doing those. Have a good week. Bye-bye. So it's Easter Sunday, but before we think about Easter Sunday and what today means, let's have a quick recap to remind ourselves what Jesus has been up to before this point today. So Jesus has been travelling around from village to village, telling people and showing people what God was like what God's kingdom was like. And then last week, which was Palm Sunday, Jesus finally arrived at the capital, at Jerusalem. And he rides into Jerusalem on a donkey. Jesus was doing that on purpose because he was protesting, he was making a point. And then when Jesus gets into Jerusalem, the next day he makes another protest and he causes a disruption in the temple. And then through the week, the leaders, the people in charge, they come and talk to Jesus. And you can tell that Jesus is in hot water. The things that Jesus is doing and saying about God, and about what God's kingdom is like, they don't like. And they look for ways to try and get rid of Jesus, but every time they do, the crowd around Jesus love him. They love listening to what he's got to say. They love the way he challenges the people in charge. And so the people in charge, that's the Jewish leaders and the elders and the chief priests, they have to find another time to get to Jesus. And so what they do is they go to Judas, or maybe Judas goes to them, and Jesus says, I can tell you where Jesus is, where no crowd will be around. And that's why Jesus is arrested in the middle of the night in secret, because the crowd aren't there to protect him. So that's Maundy Thursday. And then by Good Friday, which was two days ago, Jesus is given a like a mock trial by the Jewish leaders and the Romans. So you get the two groups of people in charge working together to get rid of Jesus because they don't like what he's about. Jesus must have known when he went into Jerusalem because of what he was saying and what he was doing that things could go bad for him. A bit like when when you're at school and you have to tell the truth to a teacher but you know you might get in trouble but you tell them the truth because you know it's the right thing to do. Well a bit like that Jesus knew that what he was doing could get him into trouble but he knew it was the right thing to do. He needed to tell people and show people uh, what God was like, what God's kingdom was like, and what it means to live God's way. And so he didn't back down, he didn't stop, and he got himself arrested. And then of course, Good Friday comes along, and Jesus is killed. And it's really important to remember, Jesus doesn't just die, 
he was killed. Now, maybe some of you know people who have died. Maybe some of you know people who have been killed. And whenever that happens, that is tragic. It's terrible. And it's no different for when Jesus died, when Jesus was killed. The disciples, his closest friends and followers, they were shocked. They were surprised. I guess they were thinking, what's happened to our friend? What's happened to our leader? What's going on? It must have just felt like the world had turned in on them and everything had gone wrong. And then we get to Easter Sunday and some amazing things start to happen. Because in the stories in the Bible, it tells us that some of the first Christians, they started to experience Jesus again. Even though Jesus had been killed, they started to experience Jesus. Crazy. Now, I think a man called Paul, and that's Paul who was called Saul, who wrote a lot of the books in the New Testament, who traveled around telling people all about Jesus. He gives us two phrases that I think sum up what happened. Jesus lives and Jesus is Lord. So let's just think about what do those mean? What can they tell us about Resurrection Sunday, this Easter Sunday, where Jesus lives? It means that those first followers of Jesus, even though he was dead, they continued to experience him. They continued to understand God through Jesus and the things that he had said and the things that he has done. And that ties in really closely with the second thing that Paul said, which was, Jesus is Lord. What does that mean? Well, I think it's something like this. It's a bit like when God raised Jesus from the dead, it's like God was saying, yes, to what Jesus said and did. So when Jesus said, you know, you should try and love your enemies, it's like God was going, yes. And when, when Jesus uh, said that we should forgive each other, it was like God was going, yes, that's like me. And when Jesus said, uh, treat other people the way that you would like to be treated, it's like God was going, yes, that's like me. So it's like God, by raising Jesus from the dead, was saying, what you see in Jesus, that's what I'm like. That's me. Jesus shows you what I am like. And that's what Jesus is Lord means. And so that means for us, we need to try and follow Jesus' pattern. We need to try and live the way that Jesus lived. We need to try and live the Jesus way. Because Jesus shows us what it means to be fully human, to live life to the full, to be the best that we can be. And by the way, this is where sin comes in, because sin means to miss the mark or miss the goal. <laughs> Jesus called himself the human one. Jesus shows us what it means to be truly human. And every time we hurt someone, we're not seeing God's thumbprint in that person because everybody has God's thumbprint. And so that means we're missing the mark. And that's true for individuals when we hurt people with our words and actions. It's true for groups of people, communities that might hurt each other and fight against each other. And that's true for countries when different countries wage war and fight. We're missing the mark. We're not seeing God's thumbprint. And then in Jesus, on the cross, at Easter, we see what God does with that sin. What is God's solution to this sin, to missing the mark? Well, look to Jesus. Remember, Jesus shows us what God is like. And Jesus' solution is God's solution. On the cross, Jesus says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. Forgive them. So Jesus on the cross shows us what God does with our sin, with when we miss the mark, when we fail to live up to who we really can be, God forgives it. God says, I forgive you. Does that mean it doesn't matter? No, it doesn't. Does that mean uh, it doesn't still hurt people? It does still hurt people. The challenge for us is to forgive others as God forgives us. That's what the cross represents, forgiveness. In Jesus, we can see what it means to live a human life, to be fully human, to live the best way that we can. So the challenge for us now, as we go on from Easter, is to try and live the Jesus way and to be aware that wherever we go, God is right there with us.
craft. Right, we're going to do a craft now that's going to help us to think a little bit more about Easter. Craft time. Happy Easter, everybody. We've come outside today because we're going to make an Easter garden, just like this one. So we've got the tomb where Jesus was placed when he died and the stone that was rolled away. And we've also got a cross to remind us that on Good Friday, Jesus died. So I'm going to show you how to make that, something like it. So what you're going to need, you're going to need something to put your garden in. So you could use a tray, something plastic like this, or you could use a box where I've cut out one side and the top of this box or you could use the lid of something or maybe a paper plate anything you can find and then you're going to need something to make the tomb so you could use a plant pot like this one or maybe an empty yogurt pot and after you've collected that you're going to have to get outside maybe in your garden or in the park or in the woods and collect loads of stuff to put in the garden so you're going to need a big stone which is the stone that covers the tomb and you're going to need some small stones some soil some twigs some moss and some leaves maybe some grass and maybe some flowers anything that you can find that will uh, decorate your garden so to start with I'm going to put your tomb in your garden. I'm going to put mine like that. And you might just want to put some stones around it to keep it, to keep it still. Like this, just to keep it in place. And then you can add lots of soil. Now, if you're doing this indoors, make sure you've got lots of newspaper down and you do it somewhere where you're not going to get lots of things messed up. I don't want you to get into trouble, getting mud and soil everywhere. Let's put lots of soil in our garden. Just like that. And then I'm going to put in the big stone that was at the entrance of the tomb. And then I'm going to put our cross in. Now I found a twig that looks a bit like a cross, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to stick it in the back there. But if not, you could get two twigs and you can tie them together with some sellotape or an elastic band or something like that. And then once you've done that, you can decorate however you like. So I'm going to put in some grass and some moss some flowers. This looks a bit like a tree so I might put that in there. And I'm going to put some stones coming up to the entrance to make a little path. your Easter garden you can decorate yours however you want so after you've eaten your Easter eggs on Sunday why don't you go outside and collect some stuff and make your own Easter garden to remind you that Easter we remember Jesus died for us and then he rose again see you soon bye all right time for a song takeaway Number one, Easter reminds us that Jesus lives. Even though he was killed by the people in charge, his followers continue to experience him. And so can we. Number two, Easter can remind us that Jesus is Lord. That when God raised Jesus from the dead, it was like he was saying yes to all the things Jesus said and did. Number three, Jesus shows us what God is like. Jesus shows us how to be fully human. And there it is. That's our takeaway for this week. So there it is, Resurrection Sunday. Jesus is alive. As you're munching on your Easter eggs, as you're eating all the chocolate, 
think about those two phrases. Jesus lives. Jesus is Lord. God's big stamp of yes on everything that Jesus did and said. And the challenge for us is can we live the same way? Have a lovely week. Stay safe. And we'll see you next time for another episode of The Bright Light Show. Boom.